So recently I've been reading this book called Awareness by Anthony DeMello, and what's so interesting about it is I'm at this part in the book where it's talking about who we are as people, right? But the who we are usually entails different people that have conditioned us, right? Uh, mom, dad, uh, grandpa, grandma, all that kind of stuff. And being aware of the I is the most important thing here. Who we are, the decisions that we're making and why we're making these decisions. The reason why I bring this up is because, especially along my journey, one of the most important aspects of healing for me is making sure that I bring all of my focus uh, yeah, all, all of my focus, awareness, and energy back to myself and into my body. And with that, knowing exactly what it is that Chris wants and why Chris wants it, right? Or what Chris needs and why Chris needs it. Um, the decisions that Chris wants to make and why he wants to make these decisions. And the reason why it's so applicable to, um, or I should say this book and this specific area of this book is so applicable to my life is because... Many times throughout my life, I've made decisions based on what other people want from me. So maybe, you know, maybe Chris is making the decision altogether, but it's coming from a place of this person's thinking or that person's thinking. And I've just really, I'm, I'm, I'm really appreciating this section of the book. It's a fantastic book. I'm appreciating this section of the book because it's allowing me to melt down all of the um, noise, all, all of the, all of the voices that have conditioned me, um, and just kind of like, you know, um, become more myself and really ground more with myself and who I am authentically rather than making decisions from a place of what everyone else thinks that I should be doing. Um, this is something that's very challenging for a lot of people. Um, Specifically, if somebody has been, you know, conditioned to believe that, you know, through things like enmeshment and codependency, they can't make decisions for themselves. They can't make their own decisions. They have to consult this person or that person or, you know, this group of people, right? Um, the most liberating thing I believe a person can do for themselves is gain clarity on what it is that they actually want and need uh, separate from what everyone else thinks that they need, Um this has a lot to do with individuation, um, you know, separating yourself from the groupthink. You'll never make a better decision for yourself than when you're faced with yourself. Uh, I can imagine that there's only a select few people in a person's life that can actually influence them uh, in a positive way. Um, people that, if they have found those people, know them well enough because of conversations to allow them or, you know, to, uh, to steer them in a positive, progressive and productive direction. Um, it's really important to be aware of yourself first and foremost, but secondly of the voices that you've also been conditioned by. You might make a decision based on what your father or your mother thinks you should do, right? But that's, that's, oftentimes not really what a person wants. It's just what they're comfortable with, what they're familiar with, what they think will bring them the validation and the acceptance and the uh, the love that they're looking for, right? Um, oftentimes people are not making the decisions that they want to for themselves because they think that if they make a decision that somebody else... Oh, here's another one too. <laughs> um, people that have a hard time with um, like responsibility and everything, right? Um, accountability, all that kind of stuff. Um, they might make a decision based on what somebody else thinks that they, they should do so that when they make that decision and it doesn't go the way that they want it to, they have someone to point the finger at, right? Um, this is why it's absolutely crucial to take all of your focus, awareness, and energy back on yourself and into your body and know exactly what it is that you want because if you don't, you're going to have a very hard time making the best decisions that you can for yourself in life. That's just the reality of it. So yeah, this section of this book has just been very interesting because it was talking about like, um, you know, look at yourself and what it is that you think. Is it your father talking through you? Is it your mother talking through you? Is it your grandmother, your grandfather talking through you? Who, who is it that's talking through you? Because more often than not, we're conditioned by um, multiple, uh, multiple voices, and these voices have an influence on the decisions that we make in life. And uh, if we can become aware of that, 
and really just allow the unnecessary noise to melt away because dad's voice there there's you know there's a good chance that it's actually not as beneficial as you think it is right maybe you're just looking for the things that you were looking for when you were younger that you never got but you never realized that you could just give to yourself right and you don't need all of these excess unnecessary extra voices that are leading you in this direction or in that direction all you really need is your own voice and I personally believe at this point in my life that you'll never live a more fulfilled life um, until you really individuate and separate yourself from everyone else and gain clarity on what it is that you want and need, uh, your likes and dislikes and everything. Having your own voice for yourself, that's what I'm getting at here. Um, until you have your own voice for yourself and you have melted away all of the excess, extra, and unnecessary noise, you know how to, um, <clears throat> you know how to keep it at bay. Uh, until then, I would argue that you're going to have a very hard time with life. Getting clarity on that is transformative.